Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Carlos, and welcome to Can We Talk About This? Everybody be cool, this is a rubbery! Pulp Fiction was not exactly a blockbuster in 1994. That's a damn shame. But almost 30 years later, it's still a massive part of movie culture. Damn, Jimmy, this is some serious gourmet sh <laughs> With me to take another look at Pulp Fiction is writer and podcaster Jason Concepcion. Tell me about the first time you watched the film and what that experience was like for you. I remember immediately recognizing that there was a cool factor. You know, just that opening scene with Vincent and Jules, just kind of like talking in the way that friends speak to one another. <laughs> I'd never seen that kind of thing before. And for you, how how is the movie aged? It's aged well, I think, except for the Bonnie incident in particular. And this is something in Tarantino's work a lot. You notice a sign in the front of my house that said dead storage. Do the amount of N words just take you out of the film? It's the dead this scene in this movie gives me pause, and it's always a record scratch. Personally, I love the movie. I Same. love that movie. But I literally had to say to myself, am I more entertained by the work than I am insulted by the word? When people say that they have, from a community, say they have an issue with the thing, maybe we should listen to it. That, th that is the immediate thing, I think, because I think that it speaks to a filmmaker who is extremely talented and who, because of how knowledgeable they are about black cinema, about black music, they th they feel like, and I can also do this. And yes, I, yes, and yes, I yes, think yes, yes. that is a very seductive trap to fall into, and it is also incorrect. <laughs> I got you, I got you. You know, Quentin cast himself, so yeah. man, he must have really wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Correct the mundo. This movie is almost like a Royale with cheese. It's delicious. <laughs> But on a long enough timeline, there's a lot of stuff in it not good for you, you know? Yeah. But we keep eating them. There's exploitative, over-the-top, some would argue unnecessary graphic content in this kind of, like, misadventure that happens yeah. to Butch and Marcellus Wallace. I remember being absolutely shocked by that scene. It's still shocking today to watch it, and that happened in a major film. That was presented to a mass market. It's something that I unpack uh, every time I've watched this movie in recent years. There is a playing with a certain kind of trope there, which is, you know, gay people as looking to trick you somehow. They are deceptive, and that speaks to, like, a more fundamental untruth about their dealings and about their character. It's worth thinking about as our consciousness on subjects evolve. Why do you think, Jason, this film remains so iconic in our lives? It was like seeing things for the first time, seeing a, a new way that movies could be made. And if you want to go further, you can deepen your understanding of what is happening here by looking into all these other references that are sprinkled so liberally throughout the film. What is it? You know, a thing that I think adds to the kind of timelessness about this film, and it's a, very, it's a simple thing, there's nothing that you could use to date the picture through products. Okay, Jason, this is our first fight. Okay. Did you just order a five dollar shake? Can we talk about the evolution of milkshake prices since 1994, <laughs> please? Certainly within Los Angeles, I've paid $12 for a smoothie. Thank you for all your time, your hot takes. Thanks for having me. This has been Can We Talk About This? I'm Jordan Carlos. Hey, enjoy the movie.